Pathfinders. Hi, I'm Brett Mortimer. And I'm Morgan Mortimer. And we're the, the Pathfinders. <laughs> There's been a lot of love and encouragement since we started this channel a week ago. But yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank, first of all, thank you. <laughs> there is one uh, thing that we've heard from people that aren't quite as into the hobby as we are. Or have never really looked into the hobby. It's that they don't know what the hell we're talking about. Yeah. It's a lot of a what the hell was that even about? You what look mean? good though. Yeah. What mean? <laughs> what mean? What are what are saying? But really though, we found that this is the biggest barrier of entry for new people. They feel kind of overwhelmed when they hear us talking about how passionate we are about everything. Um, and we kind of sometimes forget that not everybody knows these terms. So we figured, why not make a little glossary? <laughs> This video is a list of common terms used in D20 games like D&D 5e and Pathfinder 2e. These words, we tend to forget that they aren't normal people words. So this isn't an exhaustive list, but more of an explanation of terms commonly used in these systems. Feel free to share it with your pending or current players, or maybe just use it as a refresher. Simple as that, should we get into it? Sure. TTRPG. Tabletop role playing <laughs> game. It's a game where you and some friends or casual acquaintances gather around a table or maybe online and you take the roles of characters. These characters that you play as will usually go on an adventure. Some players will act out what their characters are doing and describe verbally what they want to do. Words. <laughs> With these words, they declare what actions they want to take and how they want to resolve situations around them. The game parts of the TTRPG is the actual rule system around resolving those actions. It usually involves rolling a d20 and seeing how that result compares to what's happening. Game master or dungeon master, GM or DM. This is the gorgeous player behind the screen. I didn't write that. They are pulling all of the strings of the world, describing locations, assuming the roles of all the characters and creatures that the other players encounter, and setting the mood for the game. They're basically running the entire game. They are expected to know enough of the rules to arbitrate or rule fairly, whether or not the other players are successful in what they are attempting, according to the rules of the system. Game master, dungeon master, they know the things. <laughs> Usually, DMs or GMs have some sort of narrative scenario that they have spent time preparing to present to the group, and will have the world react accordingly to what the players chose to do with their characters' actions. They're, they're like gob, but cooler. But gob, but they care about the people around them. And gob, but like, <laughs> you actually, you have a fun time in your life. <laughs> gob, except there's a point to all the things you're doing. Gob, except for- Player characters, or PC. When people say PC in tabletop role-playing games, they're actually referring to player characters. Not politically correct. <laughs> well, Brett is the player. The PC, the player character, is her character Smarf, the gnome. She's blue. Party. It's the group of all PCs all together. When referred to as a collective, they are the party. NPC, non-player character. This term covers all the characters in the game that the game master or dungeon master plays as. This includes the town guard, the local nobleman, a thief, and even that goblin that the party interacts with. We always fall in love with the goblin. You guys always fall in love with the nameless NPC you have to make up on the spot when the story thread is right there. We always end up like using our life-saving spells on that NPC. <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> <laughs> we love them. His name is Poor, and his Poor! brother's name is Lore. <laughs> Lore! Character sheet. A character sheet is the pen and paper part that TTRPGs are known for. This is where your character's foundation is. It will contain all their information, abilities, skills, and items. You will constantly be referring to your character sheet, so try to keep it handy at all times. You'll want that near you. Like, really close. It's basically a cheat sheet, so you don't have to do maths all the time. I fucking hate math. She do. She do hate math. I do be hating <laughs> math. Ability scores. Charisma. Is that charismatic? Okay. What time is charisma you go? <laughs> Wisdom. Intelligence. Strength. Pretend it's bigger. Dexterity. <laughs> Our constitution. Just getting wrong. <laughs> a big part of your character sheet is your ability scores. Uh, these are essentially the DNA of your character, and it helps dictate things that they are naturally good at and the things that they are naturally not so good at. So there are six. 
As we described, strength, how strong you are, dexterity, how agile you are, constitution, how much fortitude you have or endurance you have, intelligence, how much smarts you are, wisdom, how perceptive and insightful you are, and charisma, how much force of a personality you are. Depending on the system and game master, you either roll for these numbers or choose from a predetermined amount called the standard array and assign them accordingly. These numbers are important and you'll constantly be using them to gauge your chances of success. Race, ancestry. Two different names from two different systems. Race or ancestry is the literal genetic what to who you are. Are you an elf? Are you a dwarf? Are you a human? Or, or are, are you, you dancer? dancer? Your choice of ancestry or race will influence some of your ability scores in both positive and negative ways, depending on what you choose. They also give you unique abilities or other advantages like being able to see in the dark or having an obscene amount of luck in your day-to-day. -day. Those are the hob halflings. I don't want to include anything about hobos. Oh. Hobbits? Oh, you were saying hobbits? <laughs> <laughs> Class. This is what others will tend to describe to you as your role within the big picture. If you're a barbarian, you do hit things and you do hit them hard. And if you're a bard, you do inspire your allies and encourage them to do better. Classes will inform how you interact with the game and heavily impacts what you do and how you will act within combat. Skills. Skills broadly represent PC's abilities to do certain actions. The stealth skill allows you to skulk and sneak around without being seen, while the athletic skill enables you to brute force your way through obstacles or do physically taxing maneuvers such as climbing and swimming or even pinning down an enemy. There are a ton of skills that each have their own umbrella of activities that your PCs will find themselves doing. Proficiency. Directly related to skills, it represents how much your PC has trained at becoming competent at that type of skill. If you're trained in intimidation, your character is quite good and likely practiced at putting fear into NPCs in order to get information or influence a situation to their favor. Having proficiency in skills further increases your chances to succeed when doing activities that fall under that skill category. Well done! Thank you! Whoever wrote this <laughs> script really worked hard! Beats. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Beats. Special abilities that your PC has acquired that allow them to do things they normally wouldn't be able to do or excel at the things that they already do. Like reading lips from far away or being able to navigate heavily forested terrain without any problems. The script does say problemos, but I didn't want to read that. He got a little nervous. It's a risky maneuver. <laughs> DX. The number of dice and type of dice. The D is just short for dice. We don't know if it's die or dice, so just... Please forgive us. Please forgive us. Oh, I spit, I spit a little. Please forgive us! Please! <laughs> if a rule asks for a roll of 1d6, you would look at your elegantly organized pile of dice and pull out one die that have six sides. In D&D and Pathfinder 2e, you will primarily roll a d20 to resolve player actions. Modifier. Any number added to a roll of a dice or number already on your character sheet. Skill proficiencies and ability scores are usually added together in rolls to provide modifiers. Modifiers. If a darkened, leather-laced, dagger-wielding thief PC wanted to sneak unseen through a dark alleyway, their modifiers would likely be positive and increase their chances of getting a higher number and thus are more likely to succeed in their attempt. Go, little darkened leather guy, go! <laughs> Meanwhile, if a beefy, ironclad, two-handed knight and full-plate PC wanted to try the same thing, it's very likely that their modifiers would be negative and decrease their chances of rolling high. They're not gonna make it. It's too bad. Probably. Most likely. Skill check. Your PC's moment where they see if they can do something based on their skill and the roll of the die. Kind of exciting. Most skill checks will look like a d20 roll where you add your skill proficiency and modifier. So if that same darkened leather thief that you were talking about from the example board tried to be sneaky, it would likely look a little something like this. First of all, you roll your d20. Let's say you get a 10. Next, you add your stealth skill 
proficiency, which is two in this case. Then you'll add your dexterity modifier, which is four. Your total, maths, 16. Keep this in mind. Difficulty class. Whenever there is any doubt as to whether a character would be able to accomplish something they declare that they want to do, they will have to make a check. The difficulty class is what they will be checking against. The DC is set by the Game Master, given the circumstances of the situation at hand. The more difficult the task, the higher the DC, and this will be harder for the players to reach. For example! <laughs> <laughs> Convincing the innkeeper to knock just a few coins off the tavern tab would likely be a DC 12 with a skill check of persuasion slash diplomacy. Meanwhile, convincing the bouncer at a club that you're cool enough to be let in might be somewhere around a DC 18 of persuasion or diplomacy. Or maybe if you know you aren't cool enough, a deception check. DC, how hard it is to do something. You want to say it at the same time? Yeah. One, two, three. DC, release how hard bad girl. it is to do something. <laughs> Come I would, on. I would like to see more Brendan Fraser, though. Me too. Yeah. He was great in The Mummy, and he's a really nice guy. Also, what else could they have done with $90 million? I have a few ideas. Armor class, AC. How hard someone is to hit. Their armor class is a number set based on how armored they are or how quick they are at moving out of harm's way. Sometimes it's better to be naky and be able to dodge things. I just knew he was going to say something about being naky. Monks. Attack. Hit roll. More accurately, called an accuracy roll. This is the check that you will roll to see if you can meet or beat an enemy's AC. It's your d20 plus the relevant attributes, dexterity for ranged attacks and some melee, and strength for the rest of them, plus your weapon skill proficiency. So, if a goblin has an AC of 14, and you are making an attack roll against it, you are determining if you actually hit the goblin at all by comparing your roll to the 14 AC of the goblin. You get a 12 and you don't have any modifiers, you're not hitting the goblin, okay? God damn it, I told you already, the green goblin is invincible. Damage roll! If a hit is confirmed with the attack roll, then you then roll for damage. Damage will depend on what weapon or spell you are using, and every weapon or spell that does damage has the dice amount listed on it. <laughs> you add the relevant modifier to the roll depending on the weapon or spell you used. For instance, if you hit that same green goblin with the great axe, you will likely roll 1d12 plus your strength modifier. You can't hit him, he's invincible and he's on a hoverboard. <laughs> he's really on a hoverboard and he's flying around, James Franco. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Saving throw. This is what you'll roll in order to react to spells or hazards being set upon you. You roll a d20, add the modifiers depending on the nature of the hazard or spell to see if you can mitigate what is happening to you. Maybe a log is barreling down a hill towards you? You would give a dexterity based saving throw in order to dodge out of the way or just get slightly hit as you jump. Or I, just smashed. Yeah, I just think about that one movie. Uh, Indiana fi Jones. Final Fantasy. There's a Final Fantasy movie? What's the one where the, the bad things all happen to him and there's a log truck? Final and log Destination. <laughs> <laughs> Cloud really went crazy on that log truck. Separate <laughs> Just maybe a poisonous cloud has been cast upon you by a mean wizard? You would give a constitution-based saving throw to see if you can withstand the poison's effects. As one mean, one mean wizard. <laughs> Hello, I'm the Monopoly Man. I'm here to guilt you into liking and subscribing because of the viewers of our channel. Only 4% have subscribed so far. So please, if you like it, like it. And if you subscribe it, subscribe it. Thank you. Critical hit. When you roll a 20 on the d20 for an attack roll, you get a critical hit. It means, in short, but depending on the system, you double your damage roll. In D&D 5e, the number of damage dice you roll is doubled. In Pathfinder 2e, you double the damage dice and the included modifiers. Notably, in Pathfinder 2e, critical hits happen not only on natural 20s, but any time your attack roll meets or beats 10 plus the AC of your enemy. So, crit hit, crit hit, crit hit. Encounter. Encounter mode is also combat mode. This happens when tensions have boiled to the point where seconds matter and something consequential is happening. 
time slows to a crawl, and PCs and their adversaries are all given turns to act. Each PC and NPC are given a set number of actions and movement that they can do when their turn comes up. It goes until an objective is completed, or one side has surrounded, or one side gives up the ghosts. Initiative. A check that is determined at the beginning of encounter mode that settles the order of who goes first and when. In D&D, this is based on your dexterity, while in Pathfinder, this is based on perception or any relevant skill that is happening before encounter mode starts. Yeah, because like if you're like in the middle of talking to someone, you can just sucker punch them, and that's deception. I'm going to deceive a lot of people. Now she knows. <laughs> it's my turn. It's turn! Time. When it is an individual PC or NPC's time to play in encounter mode. This period is called their turn. Rounds. When all PCs and NPCs have taken their turn, this is considered a round. A round of six seconds in the narrative according to the rules of both systems. So your hour of staring in horror at a battle map per game is likely only 24 seconds of your PC's lives. Time is an illusion. Time doesn't exist. Okay, now do this. Do this. Do this. Say other jargon. Other jargon! Now put your hands down. Nat 20. <laughs> when you roll a 20 on the 20 set of die without any modifiers, this is a 5% chance and approximately 200% satisfying. The best outcome possible when rolling a d20. Dirty 20. When the summation of your rolls and modifier equal 20, but you did not roll a natural 20. Dirty 20. All nat ones. When you want existence to we mean when you get the lowest possible result on a d20. Depending on the game system, it means you're getting an automatic failure regardless of your modifiers. Spells. Unique magical actions that certain classes can make that have varied effects. Maybe they heal your buds. Maybe they create buds out of the ground. Or maybe they encase your not buds in unsealable tombs and send them to the depths of the earth to live in a conscious yet unaltered state for the rest of reality. They are assigned numbered levels showing how powerful they are and how powerful you gotta be to cast them. Spell slots. The amount of ammo you have for your spells. Or how many spells you can cast per day. Lightning bolt! Cantrips. Also called a level zero spell, weaker magical actions you can take that you can repeat without expending spell slots. Full of free? Mage hand. Prestidigitation? Produce flame. Thaumaturgy? Another key <laughs> <laughs> Prepared. A type of spellcaster that prepares which spells they want to have at the ready every day. They have a limited number of spells they can prepare, but they can choose from all the spells within their spell list. And that's how you describe a prepared spellcaster. You did so well. <laughs> Take 12. <laughs> Spontaneous. The other type of spellcaster who thinks studying is for nerds. They choose a new spell to learn every time they level up, so their selection is limited, but they never need to prepare their selection for the day. They just always know their shit. Session. When your group comes together to actually play. That's it. That's a session. Campaign. A collection of sessions that follows a particular narrative thread. It can last days, weeks, months, or even years. One shot. A one shot is a special narrative that can take place in one session. It's a good way to introduce new players to the game, kind of showing them how it works, or doing a themed one shot can be a fun way to switch things up for your party. One time we did a spooky time one and it was really fun. We went from 7 p.m. to 4 a.m. Don't tell anybody. We had work the next day. Don't tell anybody, says it on our YouTube channel. <laughs> session zero. The session before any sessions actually take place. You go over expectations, maybe character builds and dynamics, and plan together how to best enjoy the game as a group. It's just kind of getting all on the same page. It's really quite nice. Mechanics. Remember the dough of the pizza? Mechanics are the actual rules of the game. We went in depth on this concept in our Pathfinder 2E classes video, which we'll link to right here. Yes, yes, right, right there. <laughs> right here. Flavor. Remember, the toppings of the pizza. Everything that makes the game more appetizing, but doesn't really play into the actual mechanics of the game. 
We also cover flavor and depth in the same class's video we literally just mentioned. We'll link to it again, uh, right, right here. New spot or? Maybe over here this a little. Okay. Right here. Differentiation. Wow. So convenient. <laughs> Metagaming. When you, the player, know something that your character, the PC, would not know in the game, but you use that knowledge anyway. For instance, your group, the player, might know the monster that your group is about to battle, but your character, the PC, has never encountered this type of creature before and would have no idea what's going on. If you are in a dungeon and it's dank everywhere except one room, if you proclaim, oh, watch out guys, an ooze might be coming, you suck. You really suck. Because that's metagaming and it ruins the prep that the GM does and the surprise the other players would have felt if you hadn't ruined the moments. You're just not a good human if you metagame. Front flip. <laughs> Can you censor that? Double front flip. Not the front flip. I like the front flip. Yeah, you can keep the front flips. All done. <laughs> That's it. We know there are a ton of other words we could have included, but this video is just meant to be a start. Don't let the fancy jargon and the nerdy wordy scare you. You will get it in time. Experienced players, GMs, DMs, if we miss something you feel is pertinent, please comment below and add your definition. Let's help our communities grow by providing resources to make the hurdle of jumping into these games less daunting. And remember, wherever your path takes you, fail forward. Thanks for hanging. Session zero. <laughs> okay, I'm done. <laughs> I'm done for the day.